Discovery is inching closer and closer to the moment of truth. Let's listen to launch control. Power units which provide hydraulic power for steering and controlling flight surfaces. T minus five minutes and counting. Pilot Dick Covey now is flipping the three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three APUs. The liquid oxygen replenishing of the LOX tank has been terminated uh, at this point, and the liquid oxygen fill and drain valve is closed. Four minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, the auxiliary power units up and running, according to pilot Dick Covey. Uh, VDR, reconfigure heaters. Roger, that's complete. Coming up on the four-minute uh, point in the count, the crew has, uh, would normally close their visors, uh, but will delay that. Uh, the main engine final purge sequence is underway. The orbiter flight control surfaces, such as Elevon, speed brakes, and rudders, are now being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify that they're ready for launch. T-minus three minutes, 30 seconds. All three engines now being moved in a pattern to verify their readiness to uh, uh, support the ascent flight control. After going through their paces, they'll be aligned to their start positions. We're coming up on the three-minute point in the count at T-minus two minutes, 55 seconds. The start of the external tank liquid oxygen pressurization will begin. Three minutes and counting. Uh, and the gaseous nitrogen purges of the main engines will be terminated. Go for ETLO2 pressurization. The ground launch sequencer has started to retract the gaseous oxygen vent hood. That man is Gary Cohen. He's at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Seven seconds after Discovery is off the launch pad at 39B, his will be the voice you will hear for the duration of what's happening with the Discovery. And fuel cells has been turned so off. The voice Discovery is now running on its onboard reactants. T-minus two minutes and counting. Liquid hydrogen replenish of the external tank has stopped and pressurization to flight level is underway. The vehicle is now isolated from all ground propellant and fluid loading, loading equipment. Roger, that's complete. TLS is go for ETLH2 pressurization. T-minus 90 seconds and counting. Less than two minutes away from the launch of STS-26 and its crew of five. And we have heard that the clock will hold at 31 seconds. STDSD, it's a cabin pressure rated tank. Okay, copy. DCL. We are anticipating the clock will hold at T-minus 31 seconds due to a failure. We have not heard what that is yet. It's going down. Probably due to the increase in the O2 going in from the suit. Okay, and with your concurrence, we'll clear the air and proceed. Yeah. Uh, T minus yeah. 50 yeah. seconds yeah. and counting. We're going to clear the air and proceed. Had a concurrence from the launch director to proceed. And if we clear, we will not stop at 31. Is that true? That's correct, MTD. Thank we you. will not stop the clock. Uh, the orbiter computers have positioned the vent doors, uh, T minus 31 seconds. We have a goal for auto sequence start. Discovery's four redundant computers have assumed T minus 23 seconds and counting. 
the SRB nozzle profile. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We're go for main engine start. Seven, six, start. Three, two, one. Liftoff. Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Roger roll, Discovery. Critical current control program, Houston now controlling. Three inches, 104 percent. Velocity 2300 feet per second, altitude 5.9 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Discovery, go at throttle up. Roger, go. Discovery given a go at throttle up, 3 engines at 104%, velocity 3200 feet per second, altitude 10.8 nautical miles, downrange distance 8 nautical miles. Seconds from solid rocket booster separation. Bonnie Dunbar, I am drained. How do you feel? <laughs> well, it's not over yet, but it's looking very, very good. Well, there was a great relief once they got past in the flight where Challenger exploded. And everyone, you could feel the release. Well, we made it through the max dynamic pressure, and uh, that's, uh, it is a relief, but I think it's looking good, and uh, we'll just hold tight, make sure. We're just seeing uh, solid rocket booster separation now. There we go. And we're on the main engines. And we're into stage two. We should see those main engines cut off at about 8 minutes and 38 seconds. What are they doing right now? Well, of course, they're reading the same uh, checklist I've, I've got here. Uh, they're looking at their displays, their engine parameters, monitoring their instruments. Still of course, we spend 90% of our ASMAT training training for aborts, so I'm sure that uh, if anything were to go wrong, they'd automatically you know, go to that procedure, but it looks very good at this point. We'll be hearing some call-ups here shortly from the Capcom about the capability to reach transatlantic sites. Velocity 6,200 feet per second, altitude 41 nautical miles, downrange distance 60 nautical miles. I can envision five sets of smiles up there on board the Orbiter, Bonnie. Well, I, th I think they'll actually smile a little bit later. They may be smiling now, but there's, uh, they're listening to their calls and watching their engines. We have a number of uh, calls about what our port sites are available should we lose an engine mm -hmm. up until the uh, eight-minute point. And, uh, Here's a woman who is so utterly happy. Discovery, two-engine Maroon. Okay. Roger. Call-up indicating Kent's discovery may, may be able to uh, achieve a transatlantic abort at Moroni if that were to become necessary. Return right, status mission guys. control positions all report go. Three engines still 104 percent. Velocity 7600 feet per second. Altitude 53 nautical miles. Downrange distance 107 nautical miles. It all started here. Launch back 39B. return. And that call means that... Uh, Negative return. That call-up indicates Discovery now can no longer turn around and return to the launch site in the event of an abort. Four minutes, 20 seconds. Velocity 8,700 feet per second. Altitude 59 nautical miles. Downrange distance 148 nautical miles.
Standing by for press to ATO call. Press to ATO, select banjo. Select out. Call up indicates Discovery could reach and abort to orbit on two engines if that were to become necessary. Five minutes, three seconds. Velocity, 10,300 feet per second. Altitude, 65.7 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 203 nautical miles. It's good to hear now that you could, if you had to abort, you could do it with the two Standing engines now. That's call. right. In fact, uh, what he was calling was um, one of the abort calls that we have. There'll be several called up here as we get farther downrange.